Hello everyone, this is Mr. Mark from the Tawny Town Library, and I'm here today to show you how to make a really awesome Christmas wreath out of book pages. And all you see here is really everything you're going to need. You're going to need a book you don't really care about to tear some pages out of, and you're going to need a base for your wreath. You can see here I'm just using a ring I cut out of a cardboard box, and then I have a bit of string here as well that I'm going to glue to the back to serve as a hook to hang it on. And then I have a hot glue gun here and some tape to hold things together as I make it. Now, one quick note, the cardboard ring I have here is about nine inches wide on the outside. I found that's a good size. The inside does not matter. You just want it to be wide enough that we can fit things through later. Now, I have already here torn out the pages of this book. It's not very hard. You basically just tear the cover off. And now I'm going to start by separating some pages. You're going to want a total of about 60 or 70 individual pages in the book. So you can just use the page numbers to tear out a good amount, like zero to 100 or 20 or whatever. But I find it a little bit easier to tear out fewer at a time. It's not as hard to do. And it makes the process of removing the individual pages easier as well. You can see here that I don't worry about making sure that the edges are nice and neat. You don't want torn pages, but any rough edges will be hidden by the shape we're going to eventually make. And let's just skip ahead to when we've removed these pages. It's time to start making each of those pages into the shape we need. So I'm going to grab one of these pages and you're going to want to pick the corner that's going to be the top of your piece. And then as you can see here, I'm just going to be folding the left side in and then the right side around that to be making this nice little ice cream cone funnel shape. You can make this however you like. A useful way that I found to think about it was that you want the top end of the page on the outside to be about even with the bottom edge of the page on the inside. Now there are two different ways of keeping this thing solid. And the first is to use a hot glue gun. This is the more secure way, I have to be honest, but I really don't think you need to do it. I personally found it was just as good to grab a piece of tape and tape just the very bottom down. And you can see, you end up with the exact same shape and I haven't had any problem with it not holding. So I prefer to do it this way. It's just quicker and easier for me. But that's entirely up to you. And if you do use tape like I do, I find it a lot easier to tear off a bunch of pieces of tape ahead of time. It just makes the whole process a lot smoother. And all we're going to be doing here is just folding all 60 or 70 pages of the book. This is going to take a little while, probably an hour to an hour and a half. It's a good time to put on an audio book or watch a few episodes of a TV show. It doesn't require too much thinking. It's just a lot of repetition. And I will note, ideally, you want all of these individual pieces to be the exact same size. So as long as you find a consistent way of putting these together, I recommend you following whatever feels most comfortable for you. Like I said, the process I found of folding the left in and then the right all the way around until the bottom of the page sort of matches the top, that worked for me. You do not need to see all of these pages being folded. So I'm just going to skip ahead here and show you some of the finished product. And this isn't even all of the ones that I've done. This is only about half of my finished cones. It's what I could comfortably fit into the camera screen. But I wanted to show them off so you can see what to expect. And now we're going to move on to the actual construction of the wreath itself. We want to pull out our cardboard ring, and it doesn't have to be a cardboard ring. 
It can be a foam base or even one of those styrofoam rings you can buy at a craft store. But the cardboard box ring is really easy to make. Now you might notice here that the inside hole looks a little bit bigger than it did before. When I started getting ready to put my wreath together, I thought that the inside looked a little bit too narrow for what I wanted to do. So I just went back, cut the hole to be a little bit bigger. This does not need to be a perfect circle. You don't need to worry about making it exact. No one's going to be seeing this. It just needs to be a guide. And we're gonna start gluing our pages onto the wreath. And we're actually gluing them onto the backside here. You want to start on the back and you want the bottoms to come up an inch or two above the middle. And I actually made a mistake here. I have to uh, sort of tear that off and switch it around. I want the open part of the cone to be facing away from me here because I'm doing the back and not the front of the wreath. And I'm going to be gluing our cones in a circle around this ring, all about an inch away from that center edge and about an half an inch to an inch from each other. If you press down, you'll notice they just about touch. We're going to zoom through this. And that's the back of our wreath done. So let's flip the wreath over and you can see I've got a nice little bit of bounce in there. And hopefully you can see what I meant earlier by saying that the open parts of the cone should be facing towards the front. It gives a really nice visual effect. And we're going to start gluing the next layer of cones. And, uh, once again, uh, the open part should now be facing us. You want it to be facing forward. And in this layer, you're going to want the bottom edge to be coming down to the very inner edge of the cardboard ring. As I glue, you may notice that I am trying to cover the empty spaces in the back with the new cones. This gives the resulting wreath a really nice layered look and really adds to the aesthetic appeal. There's not much more to say about this, so I'll zoom through this part as well and just keep an eye out for how I'm trying to cover the gaps behind. It's not always perfect, but I usually try to get pretty close. And we finished our second ring of paper cones. And we've got an excellent start to our wreath. And our next step is to start on another layer. And just like last time, you want to be bringing the paper cones a little bit farther down. You want a few more inches so that the cones bottom is now sticking into that empty part. And you may notice that this is actually making it hard to glue them together because the bottoms are now starting to interfere with each other. It's making it hard to place the cones correctly, which is why once you've done a couple cones, you're going to want to flip the wreath over and actually bend those bottoms up. You're going to bend them over and we will be eventually gluing them to the cardboard ring but i'm gonna add a few more in first so let's just speed up through this process again you can see i'm just going around filling in all those gaps as best i can and then bending them back. Now that I've done that layer, I'm actually going to go through and make sure all those bottoms are glued to that cardboard ring as best as I can get. And now is a good time to mention that I am using a low temperature glue gun here. I much prefer to use a low temperature glue gun when I can because it lets me be a lot more cavalier about not burning myself. It lets me be a lot more cavalier with how I handle the paper. If I touch this glue, it's just a little hot. It won't burn me. It means I don't have to be nearly as careful about not getting hurt. If you only have a high temperature glue gun, you're just going to have to be a bit more careful about how you handle your fingers so you don't end up with lots of painful little red spots. I'll just speed up through this part of the gluing as well. 
and that should be just about done. So we flip it over and you can see how it looks. This is why I wanted to make sure I had enough space in the middle earlier. You want a good amount of space so that you can fit all these bottoms through and not have to worry too much about being squeezed for space. So we're going to start adding another layer of cones and we're going to be moving down a few more inches and you can see here that uh, there's really not a lot of space in the middle for multiple cones. So I will be placing a couple down, but then flipping over and bending them over almost immediately. And we'll speed through this part as well. I'm just going to be adding more cones in. And at this point, I'm not worried about discrete layers. I'm just trying to fill any gaps I might find and just adding in where I think the individual pieces will look best. You can just keep going until you're satisfied. I've actually seen some before where people just glue all the way to the middle so it looks like one complete piece. I will not be going that far. I like having a little hole in the middle so it looks like a ring. And I think this is a good amount. That's as many as I want maybe even one or two too many but let's go ahead and attach that piece of string i mentioned earlier as a hook so we're going to flip this over and get on the back and make sure you look at the front to figure out which side you want to be the top and then we're just going to take a little piece of rope or string and we're just going to be gluing it to the back to serve as the hook I am going to note, I did not add enough glue here. The amount of glue you see me adding here was not enough. I let it dry, I picked it up, and the string came right back off. And I just went ahead, put a little bit more glue down, made sure it was well covered, and let it dry again. And the second time was the charm. But I wanted to make a note here, in case you have the same problem, it will stick, you might just need a little bit more glue. And our wreath is ready to go. I'm going to find a good spot to hang this up so I can show you what the finished product looks like. And I have it hanging on a pole here to give you a view of how really cool this looks when it's completely done. I hope you guys try to make one of your own. If you do, please share a picture in the comments and let me know what you think. Have a great holiday season, Carroll County.